Here's how I clap, and today I'm going to show you that impulse is equal to f delta t is equal to delta p is equal to mvf minus mvi is equal to pf minus pi is equal to a newton second, which is equal to a kilogram meter per second. How is this all true? Well, I'm going to explain each and every term in this example today. So, if you don't know, j is impulse which is basically just force times time. All right, so let's get started. Let's say we have a guy named Tom Cruise, or Tom Cruise, whatever, and he is 80 kilograms, got to work out, load to be a stuntman, and uh, he jumps out of a window for a stunt. And this window is 45 meters above the ground. So, uh, uh, so uh, what happens is, first, let's try and find his velocity before he hits the ground. So, let's say he's going to, like, hit the ground on this weird-looking beanie. So, what is his velocity right over here? So, we can find that very easily because Vf squared equals vi squared. i squared here is zero because he's just walking out. And then here, a is d. So we're left with 2gd. So it's the square root of 2gd, which is 2 times 10 times 45. So the square root of 900, which happens to be 30. All right. So v is 30 meters per second or at least the final. So now, what about the time? Well, the funny thing is that VF is equal to VI plus AT. So we can find the time here pretty easily as well. So VF is VI is zero, VF is 30, A is 10, or G, and then we have T. So T is just three. So t is 3 seconds. Now we're going to find the momentum initial and momentum final. So the momentum initially, since their initial velocity is 0, is also going to be 0. Because momentum is mv. Momentum final, on the other hand, is going to be m, which is 80 kilograms, times vf, which is 30 meters per second. So that's going to be 2,400 kilograms meters per second, which actually explains one of these things that's written over there. And kilogram meter per second is actually the same thing as kilogram meters over seconds squared times one second, or in other words, a newton second. So uh, that's the final. And now, um, let's try and find J. J is just the change in P warranted by force. So, that's just going to be 2400, because it's PF minus PI, but PI is zero, so it's just PF. And that explains this term, too. And technically this term, because PF is MVF, PI is MVI, so on. And in water, and in the other scenario, he lands on concrete. So, for the water scenario, his impact time is 50 seconds, or 0 0.05 seconds, uh, 50 milliseconds, or 0 0.05 seconds. Meanwhile, when he jumps on concrete, the impact time is 0 0.001 seconds. So here, you can already predict that the force exerted on him here is probably going to be about 50 times worse than this one over here because the collision time here is one fiftieth what it is over there and they're going to experience the same impulse because they have all the other conditions the same okay so let's do the water situation here and concrete over here so we know the j is ft so F is just J over T. 
Now we know J, it's just 2400. And we know T, it's just 0.05. That's 48,000 newtons. You can do this in your head because divided by 0.05 is basically multiplying by 20. Here, we just use the same equation, F is J over T, which is 2400, just 2400 over 0.001, that's adding one, two, three zeros, so it's 24, uh, it's 24 million, no, 2.4 million newtons, which is 50 times worse than this one. So this one, he might survive with the proper equipment, this one he won't survive with the proper equipment. That's all about uh, impulse and how it's equal to delta P uh, and the unit. So that's it. Thank you everybody for watching.